Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Helen He in User Engagement Group. Welcome to today's introduction to uh, migrating from Cori to Promoter Training. A few logistics first. Everyone is muted. And also, please change your name in Zoom to first name, last name, and your username. You can do uh, click on participants and more next to your name to rename. Um, closed caption is enabled, so you can click the CC button on and off, and also an option to view for transcript. You can also save transcript as, if you wish. And we'll provide slides uh, after each talk. We'll also process videos and make them available after in a few days. We need to do some processing, uh, split and trim. We'll be using uh, the Google Doc to, for Q&A. It's preferred over Zoom chat. So things are recorded and also interleaved and also being available after the training. Here's a quick agenda. I'm doing the introduction. And Jack the Slip will uh, uh, do the intro to the parameter and all the GPUs, architectures, um, performance and programming models, um, and some science stories. Then we'll have a talk on migrating from Cori to Parameter CPU codes, a short break, and then Cori to Parameter GPU codes. Then we'll have, then we'll have hands on uh, with prepared exercises, or you're welcome to bring your own codes. We have about 45 minutes lunch break, followed with another two hours of um, hands on. Our um, staff are are available standing by and they can bring you uh, to breakout rooms when needed, can answer questions in the Q&A. Also want to uh, mention that this is like, if you're already doing lots of, um, you know, coding and running jobs on from a GPU, this may not be uh, ex uh, the training for you. It may be, you, you may think this is too, you know, basic. Uh, so it's sort of geared towards people are starting migrating from their Cori applications to, to Perlmutter. But you are, you are welcome to stay and or skip some talks and come back for the hands on exercises and because slides and talks will be available afterwards so you are welcome to you know review them as you need so, so to to be more efficient for your time. Um, hands on exercises are uh, available in the GitHub repo, and we have made two reservations: one for CPU and one for GPU. And everybody, um, existing NERSC users are already added to that project in order to access the NERSC uh, node reservations, which is an N-Train 2 project. Um, so as we have been announcing that Corey will be retired in March 2023, has been here for over six years and it's the longest lasting system producing lots of excellent science uh, for our users. The allocation 2023 will be based on Perlmutter's capability, and the NERSC hours allocated can be used on Cori. On, on <clears throat> those allocations, Perlmutter CPU and Perlmutter GPU. So the Perlmutter CPU allocation is shared with the usage on Cori. So we would like to give users more time uh, to transition your, your applications. So as of now, um, we haven't decided the official date, the capital T um, in as in March 2023, and we'll be using this T in the next slide to show some, to share some of the retirement timeline. So software has already been frozen, which means no new user-facing software will be installed by NERSC. And from now, November to January 2020, to January, we are, have, we have scheduled uh, lots of office hours and the next one is tomorrow. You're welcome to, to join. <laughs> And final date T will be announced late January or early February. And then one week before the, um, the uh, uh, retirement date, we will uh, stop uh, allowing new jobs from running. And on the day of the retirement, all the jobs in the queue will be deleted. And we will still allow you for about a week or so to um, retrieve files from Corey Scratch. And after that, uh, the system will be de deassembled. Um, how to access Perlmutter? You would do SSH, your username at perlmutter-p1.nurse.gov or uh, uh, your username at saw-p1.nurse.gov. Saw is the first name of Perlmutter. 
just for um, easy typing. And you, again, would use MFA, with multi-factor authentication, which is password plus one-time password, the same way as you do on Cori. You could also use SSH proxy to reduce the frequency of authentication. The default time is 24 hours. So you don't have to type password again and again if you're logging multiple times um, during the day. You could also use, uh, many people also use the uh, Jupyter Hub to access Perlmutter. So this is what you can see. Um, we have um, on Perlmutter, you have shared CPU node and exclusive CPU and GPU nodes. There's also config configurable GPU, which allows to, to um, say using uh, reservations and having more um, adjustable parameters that you can set. Uh, there's a terminal um, um, <clears throat> uh, kernel. For, so as, as, long as, as well as you can choose many other Jupyter Hub kernels in uh, Jupyter Hub. If you choose uh, open a terminal, then you have a, um, a terminal and um, on either on any of those nodes that the terminal deck, you can edit and see your file. And just to quickly mention the file system and data considerations. So for, for Cori, you have global home and uh, community file system directories. Those are all available on Perlmutter, um, except there's a sim link that users are getting used to um, Cori, which is global slash project slash project DERS. Um, it is the, this links to the community file system, and this sim link will not be ported to Perlmutter. So if your scripts are still using that, be sure to update it to use the new, the real uh, community file system directories. Uh, one thing to point out is that Cori Scratch is not accessible on Perlmutter. Perlmutter has its own P Scratch, and Cori Scratch will be retired with Cori. So in order to migrate Cori Scratch data onto community file system onto Perlmutter, um, either to community file sy system or global home, you can use the Globus or SCP. If you want those data to be available on Perlmutter Scratch, you, uh, there's another step that you need to move uh, from, from um, the files on CFS or F HPSS. You can, there's a Globus endpoint for Perlmutter that you can um, move data over. Um, the link has all the details. Um, a few similarities for Cori and Perlmutter comparisons. The user environment is pretty similar. We also use PRG ENV modules and the compiler wrappers to, to build uh, um, applications. You'll see, hear more in the next uh, CPU talk. And we also use the Slurm on Perlmutter and has very similar queues, regular premium overrun shared, et cetera, especially on CPU. C shared is only available on CPU. And the compute nodes. Uh, the, on the, the C, CPU compute nodes as AMD instead of um, Intel, but with, with uh, very similar CPU architecture, a new um, number of domains is different, but uh, very similar architectures, no major surprises. And it has similar to Haswell clock speed and similar in Kenya uh, as regard to number of cores per node. Uh, some major differences. On Perlmutter, we use LMOD, um, Cori use um, Tickle. They're still pretty similar, but uh, has some, have some differences. One of them like module avail versus module spider and module load with, versus module uh, swap. And you'll hear more in the CPU talk as well. The GPU nodes, uh, that's pretty new, brand new uh, as compared to Cori and have su substantially different programming models required to exploit GPU nodes. And some applications may already have, you know, GPU compatibles. Um, they may have different versions for GPU compatible um, binaries or uh, CPU code um, application, CPU versions. So using GPU is um, the topic of today's um, training. Uh, just to point out, we're not uh, training on the program, the programming models uh, for GPU, we have, uh, I'll, I'll have, at the, the last we have, I have, I have a slide showing all the previous trainings on using different programming models, OpenMP, OpenACC, CUDA, et cetera. So the training today is more on practical usage on, on using GPU nodes. Um, compiler differences, um, there's no Intel compiler, which is the default on Cori, and we currently do not have a plan to support it in the 
the default program environment um, our core model is GNU, and we have other uh, NVIDIA and uh, Cray compilers available. So as I mentioned, this is uh, a few existing training materials on using core mother um, 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 programming models, et cetera. And the, the pink line shows all the training events. You can find the, the 2022 events there and then some links over archives. Then you find archives that, that are 2021, all the previous years. And have, we have slides and recordings available for majority of the trainings or most, uh, if not all. And uh, feel free to explore. Um, using parameter training, uh, we was focused on GPU in January. And new user training is also um, geared towards using Parameter, GPU for Science Day, and lots of programming model and use, user applications. Their um, stories are porting applications to Parameter. Data Day is focused more on data usage, data workflows, um, tools. And then we have OpenMPL Float, CUDA, OpenACC, SQL. And the Kodi is a development tool that helps you to inserting or um, OpenMP and OpenACC directives for your applications. NVIDIA HPC SDK is all about the NVIDIA uh, suite um, with um, supporting OpenMP, OpenACC, CUDA, and also standard parallelization. Um, what, what upcoming training opportunities? Um, as I mentioned, office hours, uh, we have held three uh, in November and talked to over 50 users. Additional uh, office hours are already scheduled for December and January, and one upcoming one is tomorrow. And another Cody training is under, under planning. Then also, we're also planning a, an end ways for GPU programming bootcamp. Of, um, offered by NVIDIA slash OpenACC. So we'll be talking about these um, programming models um, and having a mini challenge um, in the bootcamp. Thanks for your attention. Uh, if you have more questions, need help, uh, the help portal is the um, best way to reach us. <laughs>